Welcome to Comic Book Empire. I'm your host, Bird Bouchard. Today's episode is going to be a great one for you, as a bunch of comic book fans are going to Paper Heroes here in Windsor. We're lucky enough to be interviewing Tony Gray, artist of Conduit, so that's going to be awesome. And uh, also in this episode, we're going to have a lot of comic book news, as well as a poll list. So stay tuned for a bunch of fun. This episode of Comic Empires brought to you by Forever Films. Memories have to be captured. So this is the segment of the show where me and the rest of the crew are going to do our very best to bring you viewers up to date with all the new stuff in the comic book world. Well, obviously not all of it, because, you know, we're not superheroes. But anyway, uh, anything new with comics, movies, anything that can get your nerdgasms going, we're going to be covering it. So starting with the newest news, October 1st, sad to say it, but Jeff Lemire's run with the Arrow fantastic comic book is sadly coming to an end but I know don't be too upset it is bittersweet because the producers from the show Arrow will be taking over in uh, October 1st issue number 35 so obviously that's gonna be something really different to take in um, not sure how they're gonna be going about it um, you know it's it's been one of the greatest issues out there um, monthly uh, Lemire's been doing a great job, but sadly we're going to have to hope that these new producers from the show who are now going to be doing the script can really bring along and start something new. So this picture is totally badass. Like, I can't even continue. I, I don't even know what to say about this. Superman looks freaking fantastic here. And this is coming from someone who absolutely hated the first Man of Steel. Yeah, I know, say what you want about it, but I hated it. But this picture, however, completely, completely shows how Superman should be illustrated. I mean, you just look at the background here, and it's totally got that Gotham-esque feel. It's kind of flexing the muscles. I like it. Um, I literally just can't wait for this movie to come out. I mean, Batman's totally gonna, you know, he's gonna release a can of whoop-ass on Superman. It's gonna be fantastic. And there you have it, folks. There's your segment of what's new in the comic book world. Bird Bouchard, here today at Paper Heroes. Today we're lucky enough to be with Tony Gray, uh, amazing artist for Conduit. So, uh, Tony, if you don't mind me asking, uh, how did you first get your inspiration for comics? I started uh, when I was about four or five years old. I remember drawing like this little picture of Donald Duck in front of the, uh, the TV screen with my parents sitting around. And it was like, hey, that kind of looks like Donald Duck. I'm sure if I saw it now, it doesn't look anything like Donald Duck. But as a, as a four-year-old kid, it was like, well, it looks a lot like Donald Duck. And, and it was like this, this like epiphany. It was like this magic that was in my head is now on this sheet of paper and it's never stopped fascinating me that something that's up here ends up on that paper like even to this day doing these elaborate conduit drawings with wreckage and explosions and everything it's I was like wow look at like it ends up on the paper so it, you know it's, it's a lot of fun to be working in an industry uh, and in a position that I'm in uh, where every every day it's like just some magical thing that that happens on the paper so I, I consider myself pretty fortunate yeah. So uh, a lot of your artwork is pretty stunning and looks amazing. Um, you could almost say it's unique and really lifelike. So if you don't mind, can you please explain to our viewers um, the process of even making a single panel? Sure. What, what I'm always trying for with my characters is volume and form and muscle. Uh, while keeping like a, a very straight and, and uh, proper understanding of anatomy. It may seem exaggerated, but actually the muscles are in the right spot. I have a background in classical anatomy, so that's, that's why I'm such a, a stickler for it. But uh, what I'm always uh, attempting to do is create that volume through shading, which is a little bit unusual uh, for the comic industry. Most people are working uh, harsh black line with, uh, with uh, pen and ink. Uh, well, I'm utilizing a lot of uh, airbrush as well. 
uh, which gives a softer gray tone. If, if people are familiar with uh, Den, uh, which was a, a feature by uh, Richard Corbin back in the 70s and 80s, it's that kind of style where, where you know, if, if uh, the conduit punches somebody in the face, they feel it because they've got a they've got a 300 pound guy with with arms you know almost as big as mine uh, getting ready to punch somebody in the forehead. So that's what I'm always going for: volume and power. Can you talk to us about the uh, Lou Ferrigno and how he inspired you to uh, actually as a as a base for your drawing and other people that you use as bases for your drawing? I like to use uh, the bodybuilders from the 70s and 80s. Uh, before things got so so roided out that these people don't even look human anymore I think that for, for me my version or vision of a, a, the perfect superhero body is that Arnold Schwarzenegger from 1972-73 and then when Lou Ferrigno came back in the early 90s uh, and competed and he was like this 365 pound guy he was the biggest guy that had ever competed at, at that point right uh, so but they still had the the basic structure and form of, of musculature that we're all familiar with. The bodybuilders today, they're extreme and they're incredible, but th they're just so extreme that uh, that they're beyond what I'm looking for in, in my characters. So that's why I, I have a tendency to go back to those, those older magazines and the older uh, bodybuilding uh, books and reference, because uh, they, they still have, uh, they still have the uh, appearance and size yet they're still having uh, the ability for mobility uh, whereas the guys that are so big now uh, like the Ron Coleman's like, these guys are incredible and I love I love watching but they don't actually make for the best superheroes because you don't believe that they could move at the and have the flexibility that's necessary to be superheroic in a lot of these unusual and crazy poses is there anything that us readers can look forward to in the future with conduit or the next issue the next issue is always the one to look forward to. <laughs> in my view, every whenever someone asks, what's the best stuff you've ever worked on? It's like, the stuff I'm working on tomorrow, that'll be the best stuff. So yeah, like if, if, you, if you like the conduit, uh, the first issue that came out under Glass Monkey, I hope you like the second one even better. And then I hope the third one will be better than that. Although right now I'm working on two, so that's the best one. So go buy that one. Well, there you have it, guys. You heard it here first. Tony Gray, awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks Appreciate it. Take care. Welcome to the poll list. This, in my opinion, is probably going to be my favorite segment of the show because I get to recommend you, the viewers, some of the comics that I love, that I absolutely love reading every month and sometimes weekly. So uh, before I actually give my picks, my handsome devil brother, here's a picture of him. Anyway, anyway, he is highly recommending Batman. Um, you know, Scott Snyder's writing this book, fantastic. Um, I really can't recommend it anymore, although I haven't been reading it. I know Scott Snyder does some fantastic work with Eternal as well as this Capullo guy. His art, honestly, fantastic. So good. See? So good. See, like, even my brother, he's filming this and he has to put in his input. I want to so, give him a hug. Yeah, he, he wants to give him a hug. So if that's not saying enough, then I don't know what is. So, Batman, get on it. And next, The Bunker. All right, um, this book was first actually introduced as an online comic. But now they finally got their heads out of their, you know what, and they're starting to bring it. Yes, they're bunk. Okay, they use Charmin, they wipe their butts. Okay, whatever. But now they're starting to bring it to a comic. Okay, this art, fantastic. I absolutely love the idea of this whole time travel, new Grady, old Grady, and it's coming together. We really don't know what's happening, but yet it keeps me coming back every single month. No spoilers for me because that's how great this book is. Honestly, if you're not reading it, you're a loser. Absolute loser. You suck. Yeah, like, you suck. Um, next, The Amazing Spider-Man, okay? First of all, I don't even know why they ended The Amazing Spider-Man and there shouldn't be a volume two, you know? It should still be The Amazing Spider-Man. It should be on, like, issue 720 now. But anyway, yeah, uh, The Amazing Spider-Man, 
fantastic, love it, really brings back my childhood. Next, my favorite out there right now, Lazarus. Forever Carlisle just completely showing you how badass a woman can be, you know? She'll kill you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The art in that makes up for it alone. The story, even better. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. That's right, folks. It's the end of the episode. I know it sucks. But what will bring you into your, or actually a smile to your face, subscribe to us. You can do it right here. Or you can like us right here. Or you can tweet us. And I don't know where that'll be. Probably somewhere around here. But anyways, that's the end of the episode. Thank you so much for watching. Tell your friends. Tell your mom. Give her a hug. And that's it. Give him a hug. All right. Give him a hug. Give him a hug. Give him a hug. Give him a hug. Give him a hug.